Okay, I'm gonna start. Can everyone hear me? I don't know how many people is here right now. Like if you can comment on YouTube, let me know. Hey, Linda. Okay. Awesome. All right, I'm just gonna show my face a little bit. Um, so, this is the thing we're gonna work on today. So before I start painting, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the scene and just to go over with the process. Cause every time before you start painting, you should always looking at your subject matter and think about how are you going to translate that into a painting, which is really, really important. Cause if you just go to it without any thinking, and you just start to draw and start to paint. Like most likely in my in my experience, it's not gonna turn out that well. Now this is a relatively simple scene, but we still need to think a little bit in terms of composition and stuff. So this take this photo is not taken by me. It's taken by my friend Michelle. So the credit goes to her. But when I saw her, when I saw this photo on Instagram, I just asked her, "Oh, can I paint this? Because this." scenery is perfect for watercolor and she said yes she's pretty excited so this is what i'm gonna paint and i think this demo will be very very a um, great example for how watercolor can do atmosphere very well so this we have a very simple pretty much just white sky it was foggy day foggy morning and we have a water very clean water surface with reflection and um see what else is there and we have some rocks now these rocks are really complicated but it's good to have a little bit of um, have a little bit of detail and we'll simplify most of it so obviously this will be the background and this will be the foreground and somewhere around here will be the middle ground I'll probably invent one were two figures in it just for scale reference. So we have a background, let's say one, so two be the mid-ground and three, part of my bad handwriting. I'm trying to do it with a mouse. I have a tablet, but it's not connected right now. So we have a first, we have a background, middle ground, and a third ground, uh, and foreground. Now, just another thing that I'm going to do is I'll recomposite the v, um, the singer a little bit. So first of all, I'm gonna crop it down just slightly. So what happened is usually when we are, cause I'm pretty sure this is taken by a, uh, a phone camera. So usually what happens is when a phone, when we take a photo from a phone camera, phone camera is a really wide angle lens so it's usually wider than our field of view so i'll usually crop it a little bit and then i might move this part i'm just gonna hide this i'll probably move this part a little bit to the left so i'm just going to do a really quick tweaking this is photoshop by the way like I don't do this for every painting. I just do this just to show you my thought process because I think it'll be easier for me to show you in like visually instead of just try to speak to it. So let's say I'll just move this. Uh, okay, yeah. Like roughly, I'll just move this guy a little bit to the left. So this rocks and all this stays here, just at this distance, I will just move it to the left a little bit, maybe a little bit more. What I really want to do is just to leave a little bit of opening. So something like this. Okay. Okay. 
So that gives a little bit of opening. So instead of this, which is a huge empty space, I will move this tree a little bit to the left. So this will lead your eyes like so. It might move some rock a little bit just to make sense a little bit more sense for the composition. So again, this will be the um, the saw process that I'm going to show you guys. So remember, before any sort of painting, keep in mind, think about it a little bit, plan your attack a little bit before you actually start it. So from this into this, so I feel this is a lot more manageable. Obviously, I need to tweak this a little bit. I'm just showing you real quick. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time in Photoshop. <laughs> Hi, Janice. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time in Photoshop. This is just visually showing you how it's going to be work, uh, how it's going to be done. So I am going to switch my camera to my painting view, like so. Okay. Can everybody hear me clearly? There's a little bit of ambient music in the background. I just thought I'd throw that in. I'm gonna hide myself. So, okay, let me move my microphone here so you guys can hear me. All right, so here am I on the paper. This is 12 by 16. So I'm just gonna start off by doing a very, very simple sketch. There's no building, there's nothing, so I'm just going to do a very simple sketch. Now, the horizon, which is the water line. In the photo, the horizon is a little bit be below the middle, but I'm actually thinking to raise it just a little bit. So we have a little bit more foreground and less of a background. So middle is around here, so I'm just going to raise it a little bit, like so. the horizon right there and so I mentioned before we're gonna move the distant trees distant forest a little bit this is um, Jordan Pond by the way I think it's in Wisconsin so my friend Michelle is there probably on vacation or whatever it is she's doing and she just woke up in the morning and visit the pond and she just saw this really nice beautiful scene okay. so some trees here in the background okay we'll try to do just a little bit darker so you can see And then there's one tree that is here. Okay. So there's one big evergreen tree here, and a few on the back, some rocks here. Now, this is very rough, okay? Where I sketch the rock doesn't necessarily mean that's where the, going, the rock is going to be. I'm just making mark for me to have a reference when I start to paint. And there's like hundreds of rock here. There's no way I'm going to paint them all. 
so I'm merely just going to group them all together. that a little bit. Okay. We have one rock here. I'll make this rock relatively big. Now I think I'll snuck a figure here. figure right here, very roughly. And we all have another one here. So they're just kind of maybe standing there enjoying the view, whatever, but the figure here will help me to just get a scale reference and we'll have like a focal point here so the stream the pond will lead your eyes the rock formation lead your eyes to figure and into the distance sort of okay With another rock here rock here so these are very loosely sketched i'm not doing this Okay, never do that. Just very loose. Try not to lift your pencil off the paper. Like a large rock here. Okay, here's some trees, vegetations, grass here mixing with the rock. Those will be mostly done in wet and wet. All right, so. That's pretty much it for the sketch. I'm gonna clean up some of the pencil lines here. Okay. So. All right, so. I'll start with my first wash. So take my biggest brush. This is a squirrel brush. Size 18. So notice my palette is dirty. And that is fine because I always use dirty palette. Because you get to pick up some nice color with your dirty palette. And I can star my gray from there. I'm just add a little bit of turk um cobalt blue to make it a little bit cooler. And this is a very watery wash, so the first wash pretty much just to get the white of the paper out of the way. Okay. A little bit bluer but it's relatively monochromatic. This is going to be a very monochromatic painting. Now start to add a little bit more the warmer color, a little bit darker. Not by much, but a little bit more. Okay, so we stop around the horizon. Okay. I'm gonna try to spray a little bit of water, make sure it really runs down. Okay, wash it down a little bit.
tilt my paper a little bit so make sure it, run, it runs down very nicely so here's a bead here I can continue the wash down as long as the bead is there let me clean my brush so it's just clean water and just go over it like that a very soft horizon a little bit of highlight here which is fine it's actually a very nice thing to have now adding some tone to it a little bit green, a little bit blue. Still relatively cool. Okay, a bit too much. Okay. And yes, over the rock, over everything. I might leave a little bit of highlight for the rock. I'll keep them loose and spontaneous. Okay. Just slow down a little bit. So from this, I start to use the little bit tip of my brush. to it so it doesn't dry that fast again or start to make it a little bit warmer so a little bit greener and a little bit I add a little bit of lizard and crimson cobalt turquoise This is just the first wash, try to relax. Don't try to do too much. So these highlights and stuff, don't stress too much about them when you just start to paint. Like when I started to paint, I stressed so much about those highlights. And then I work so slow on those highlights and the wash become dry. And then it gets worse. So the highlights, if you can do it, that's great. If you can, don't stress it. Okay. I'm gonna make it a lot darker here. A lot darker, a lot warmer. Shots with a nice dark gradation. Okay, spray a little bit. Splash some water on it just for a little bit of fun. And uh, it's just brush like very damp brush just go over those and create a little bit of some sort of ripple okay and that's the first wash let me see and I'm pretty sure it's still wet. 
so I need to wait for it a little bit. But again, the first wash is pretty much just the atmosphere. Okay, I'm not worried about painting the trees and the figures and anything. Just those are not the focus of the um, the first wash. First wash is to get the atmosphere down, get the white of the paper out of the way, establish a nice gradation, some basic color tone, and that's it. So let me see. Yes, it's still a little bit of a little bit wet. So I'm gonna wait for it a little bit. Okay. So while we wait, it, does anyone has any question? So I can answer you right now. I can still read the comment. Oh wow, thanks for waking up early. <laughs> okay, let me pull the original image up so you guys can compare. Um, okay, so this is watercolor block. So what it does is it glues on the side. So everything is pretty much on a really thick board right here. So I don't really stretch the paper because um, when it gets really wet, it'll buckle up a little bit. But when it dry, it'll just flatten itself up. So that's why you don't see me tape the, uh, the border of the paper or clamp or anything. So this works really well. Now the angle I'm on, the angle I'm painting on is about maybe 30, 40 degree. So at that angle, the wash will kind of runs down very naturally. Okay, it's almost dry. So I'm just going to wait a little bit more. You're looking at the marking trip to incorporate in tripping. Like you mean the um you mean the pencil uh you mean the pencil mark? Um those are yeah, those are some references. So when I see like the rock, I'll start to slow down a little bit and maybe leave some highlight. But this is not paint by number, so I'm not doing a coloring book. This is just basic placement and this is just basic placement and, and size. So by the time I work on the figure, maybe they won't even, you know, they won't even be here. Maybe I'll move them a little bit or something. I'm not quite sure yet. So part of the watercolor is to you know, have a little bit of spontaneous in it. Uh, the brown, I mix a little bit of like if you see my palette it, it out like this so this is ultramarine blue this is cobalt oh, oh this is neutral tint ultramarine blue cobalt blue this is cobalt turquoise this is burn umber burn sienna yellow ochre this is hansen yellow cadmium orange cadmium red carmine Olerzer and Crimson, this is color I use a little bit less. This is Cerulean Blue. Uh, I believe this is Cobalt Turquoise Pale. This is 
Uh, this is yellow. A uh, cadmium yellow. This is ye lemon yellow. See, I don't remember those names too much. They're just warm to cool to me. So, I want a little bit of brown in it. I just start to mixing. That's why I never really say, oh, okay, I miss this color plus this color, so it'll become which color. So. A lot of time I just, you know, it's purely intuition. I always said that mix color with your eyes, not the formula. If you think about what color you need to use to make to, to make a specific color, you are pretty much you know, distracting yourself and you're giving yourself a lot of pressure and you're not thinking about how to paint. All right. Uh, no, <laughs> I don't use a hair dryer because I'm never in that of a hurry. And sometime before it's dry, it's still doing something to resolve itself. So I don't want to just disturb it. But I think this is wet enough. I mean, this is dried enough. So I'm going to continue on the second wash. All right, get that image out of the way. So, I'll do a test. All right, that should be okay. So just clean water. I'm just gonna wet this area. That area will be the distant forest, All right? Give it a little bit, wet a little bit bigger than you think you'll need. But stop at the horizon. Don't wet any more down there. Otherwise, it's going to run down. And while that wetness is there, I'm going to make a nice distant tree colors. Okay. okay. A little bit of green blue. I'm going to throw it down a little bit. A little bit of purple. Okay. So I use a bunch of different colors. I'm just looking at the color. Feel maybe this a little bit more cool. That looks like a right value. And what I'm going to do, do a test. Okay, a little bit more green. So this area is completely wet, so I'm just going to drop the paint in here. Okay. Use the tip of my brush. And just start to drop in the paint. Let me zoom it in for you. All right. I switched to another camera. So you can see a little bit better. I'll need to remember to switch it back. So if I start to paint outside the frame, let me know. I'll try to switch it back. All right, so. Okay, I actually think I need a little bit softer brush. It's a little bit too stiff. I'm gonna use a little bit neutral tint. So even within this area, there's still a little bit of value variation. So I'll drop in a little bit more paint here and there. So warmer, darker as it goes here because it getting closer to you, but still there in the same level. very freely these are all evergreen trees so you can start to give it a little bit of definition but keep in mind they are in the distance 
Okay. Just drop the paint in that the watercolor do the work. Okay. A little bit too brown. I'm gonna add a little bit green to it. that be a little bit too big dry brush and get it out of the way so it's here okay. so a smaller brush okay just use the tip of my brush Let me move that camera a little bit, sorry. Use the tip of my brush so very lightly. Very lightly give it some definitions. Very little. Okay. Need to be a little bit more dry. Okay, a little bit more dry. Just give it a little bit of tree trunk, some branches, whatever. You just need a few. Just need a few to show that. This is a group of trees. So, to steal from Bob Ross, happy little trees. Okay, they are all in the distance. These are all soft shape. Here, there. Okay. Stepping back a little bit. Okay. Looks okay. like some purple color. Drop it down here. I want this part to be a little bit more heavy. So what I'm doing right now is to looking at the shape. Is the overall shape working? Is there a little bit of depth going on? I'm not looking at individual trees. I'm looking at it as a group. A little bit stiff looking, so I'm gonna oops splatter some water on it. And I just put some dirty paint on it, didn't I? Wet it, press it, it'll be gone. Take that bead away. His job is done here. Okay. Spray some water. And I think that looks pretty good. bit more to definitions here now there's still a little bit of paint here I can start to 
move this wash down a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna drop some water to wash off some of the paint here. Just to give it a little bit more variety. It has to be done while it's still quite wet. Okay, so I see a, quite a bit of shine here. I can continue down. All right, so looking at it as a whole picture, we got a nice background down. I am going to All right, I'm going to paint the reflection of these trees. So, just clean brush, like so. I leave a little bit of highlights here, okay? Because they can be rock, dirt, whatever. Don't just, you know, merge it all together. Have a little bit of separations. And some nice water. We wet that area so you have a nice way for it to run down. So see, there's already some paint coming down and these are perfect. Now, I'm going to mix a little bit cooler color. Let me see how this will look. Uh, can make it a little bit, just a little bit greener. Okay, dropping the color, and because I paint tilted, gravity is going to help me to pull the paint down. Okay. Okay, I'll spray a little bit more so we just make it a little bit wetter. Okay. So you notice I spray quite a bit of water on it because it has to be really clean and really soft. That's why I do that. Actually, let me use a little bit bigger brush so I can hold a little bit more water to it. Okay. Alright, so here we go. Let it flow, let it come down. a little bit too big of a bead flowing down I'm gonna cut that off okay now before that is dry I'm going to disturb it just a little bit okay. I want to give a tiny bit of break It's a very still water, so I don't want to start to do a lot of ripples. But I do want a little bit of streaks for it to break just a little bit. Okay. So keep that going. Keep the highlight. Seeing that looks pretty good. What? Something on the paper is quite odd. 
don't know what that is. I might do like a rock or something to cover that up. I don't know what happened to the paper. Okay. I'm gonna rotate it a little bit so it doesn't all go this way. And now that is drying. This is completely dry. I'll start to do the rock, the tree in the front. Alright, so I'll try to treat it all as one shape, at least the major land, the rock, and the tree here. Can everyone still hear me? Can everyone still see? Right, just making sure because my cell phone says live stream offline, so I'm getting a little bit nervous. All right, good. As long as everybody's still here, okay. Right, just making sure because my cell phone says no, live stream offline, off to so sleep I'm yet. getting a little bit nervous. All right, okay. So I took good, a lot of time on this, but this is pretty here. important. Right, just making sure because my cell phone says no, live stream offline. Now I'm going to do the foreground yet. tree, so I add quite a bit of. Uh, right. Okay, so I took yeah, a lot of time on this. Tent. This is pretty yeah. important. So that'll I'm make a sure pretty nice I'm dark to do the color. Tree. Tree. So I add quite a bit of. Uh, okay, so I took yeah, a lot of time. So it's pretty tent. warm. It's pretty important. So that pretty dark. So notice I don't have any tube nice of green. Cobalt turquoise is as so green as I go. And I can so mix with warm. other brown color to so make it sound really so nice. I don't have any tube of green. Cobalt turquoise is as green as I go. And I can it's mix with warm. other brown color to oh, make it sound really so nice. I don't have any tube of green color. Green as green as I go. And I can mix with... Ah, sorry. Okay. Yeah, the computer is doing something funny. I'll use two brush, uh, this one a little bit smaller, just to give a little bit tinier detail. Sound should be okay now, right? Okay, so break up. Break this up a little bit, okay? So you might feel, oh, well, why is there something floating? Well, you know, sometimes we do look at the tree that way, right? There's some few leaves floating around. So this is just really abstract shape. But as long as it reads tree, it'll be all right. Shape 
here. Okay. Tiny delicate details here. Splatter some water on it just to break that solid shape up a little bit. At what point I start the painting reflection? What well, the? Because it was pretty wet, so the more I'm gonna add is just going to keep coming down. So I feel that was a pretty good. This is a pretty good value, so I stop it at that point. And because if I need it to be a little bit, if I need to be any more darker, I can just come back to it with glazing. That's something you might need to gain that experience. Sometimes you need to, yeah. Some at some point it's gonna you're gonna know that oh it's getting a little bit too much, and you stop. Now I might come back to it and glaze it a little bit more, but when it is so wet, there's only so much you can do. And even if I add more, the wash is just going to bring the paint down, so it's not going to get any darker. Okay, so, okay, so there's a figure there, so I'm going to try to preserve that. trees oh. Add a little bit of start to make things a little bit more warmer as we come down to the rock and so on about the figure a little bit later. Just want to get the basic shape down first. I'm going to change a brush. So I can start to paint some rocks here. Okay, a little bit smaller rock in the distance. That just sort of enhanced the perspective. Okay, maybe one tiny one here. Like, don't overdo it. You don't want like a bunch of visual noise. But just some rocks that convey the distance. So 
So as it comes forward, the rock gets a little bit bigger here and there. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, rock, grass, trees, but if we're going to explain everything here, I'm going to stay here. You, you, Yeah, we're all going to stay here for a very long time, so I'm just going to try to differentiate them by value. bigger brush forced me to not paint the detail. Suggestive detail by leaving some of the white spot. I'll try to leave it as a nice sketch. Some very dark value here for the foreground. So the darker it is, the more forward is pulling. So at the foreground, keep in pretty dark here. All the way down to the edge. Okay, so this shape will be a nice big foreground rock. So I'll bring that dark value over. And that's where the rock ends. bit greener and I'll soften this edge while it's still wet so it has a little bit gradation going on so the form turns this is still very wet so I can come in give it a little bit of form shadow like so. Make sure your mixture is pretty dry. Otherwise it's just gonna flow down. Fix that shape of the rock a little bit. Here we go. Here. A nice big rock here. And then some more rocks on the back. sure we cut around that we don't paint that in yeah painting rocks and trees and things like that is a real pain because there's a lot of repetitive shape but we're trying to simplify them as much as possible okay nice 
dark, big rocks here. So I'm only referencing back from the photo once in a while. Now it's really all about my own painting. So those incidental highlight now comes in handy. Gives me a nice location for me to paint the rock in. bigger a bit bigger here a bit bigger here so a bunch of rocks laying out differently like so I'll have another rock here and I need to extend this rock some of the rock should connect so you don't have individual shapes all over the place now These are just painting shapes. Anybody can do it. But the saw process behind each individual shape, that's what makes it difficult for me. <laughs> so it's looking like I'm just painting random shapes, but I'm actually trying to think if this shape will work out here. Is this shape looks like a rock. Do we need a little bit more? Is it too much? And so on. So random shape like that sometimes is quite stressful. If it is a building, I'll just paint what a building looks like, but rocks, all sort of random shapes. It gets quite difficult sometime okay. okay now this weird spot I'm just gonna paint a rock over okay a little bit here a little bit of rock here again using the highlight Painting series of different rock. Now I do plan to do a big rock here. See, I'm gonna move that rock a little bit towards the right. So it's not so big and start to obstruct the view. Darker on the bottom. Like so. Now you notice most of the rock, I keep the bottom relatively flat. That's because they're sitting on the water surface. Now, some rock can have form coming out a little bit more, but it's all about visual language. You want all the rock to sitting on a nice flat water surface. Okay. Another rock here. Okay. All right. I think you guys are enough had enough of me painting rock. So like after the live stream I'll probably still touch up things here and there, but Now notice most of the rock I done it in a few stroke. I don't keep doing this like so. Otherwise the painting will start to look messy very very quickly.
Now, here comes the fun part. I'm going to do some reflection of the rock. So we'll start from this one. This one's nice and fresh. Again, I'll make the reflection slightly cooler. Like so. Okay, this shape is a little bit funny. I'm gonna fix that by one stroke here. Okay, I'll bring that water down. Drop in a little bit more paint. And now those rock has reflection. Okay, now. now this reflection, I'll make it a little bit sharper. That's a little bit odd. I'm just gonna keep the nose soft here. So just water. Keep it down like so. Purplish. I'm gonna add some burnt sienna here. Okay, leave some highlight on the top. surface here and see if I can just do them in one go the water is a little bit dirty but that's okay Nice and wet. Drop the paint for the reflection where you need it. I think it's a good idea to keep them all soft so you have a nice edge differentiation between the rock and the reflection. Okay, remember, don't go down over the rough rock. Okay? Keep those highlight there. 
Hanged around those. It feels like a game. Dodge the highlight. Don't paint on those. Now it's still quite moist, but some of the area are actually drying. So I need to finish those quickly. Squeeze out the moisture and I'm going to break some of this rock, um, break some of this reflection like so. Just a tiny bit. Okay. Hope those are clear to you guys. Uh, this. Tiny rock has reflection too, so I'm just going to do that very quickly. Soften those. How are those looking? I hope you guys are liking it so far. going to add some darker shapes on the rock just to bring them just to bring a little bit more form out of it so they don't look like just flat um, like piece of cutouts so it's useful to think of rock as all of the rocks are three faces so we have one on the top catching the light, we have a darker side, and we have a slightly lighter side. Okay, even though I know the rock can be a lot more complicated than just three sides. But when you're painting, you want a nice, simple visual language. You don't want to render every single rock. I mean, you can do that. Some artists do that really, really well. I'm just, I'm just not one of it. I'm not patient enough to do a hyper-realistic painting of rock. And not just one rock, like you know, 200 of them. Okay. A little bit more detail. There's some crack on this rock that I think will be very helpful to put those in. Okay. And those cracks should follow the form of this rock. Okay, a little dry brushing. Okay, a little dry brushing brings out the texture I'm gonna add some lighter green here so it feels like some moss on the grass. I mean, some moss on the rock. It's pretty wet, so life starts growing. And uh, 
come back and catch some darker value and put it here for those background rocks behind this big rock so I put those dark in serve two purpose first to give some definition of this area now right now it looks like a blob but as soon as I give it some other value it start to read as form and second is to pop this rock out so now this rock pops out a lot more because of the dark values around it okay thank you guys the scariest thing about watercolor is I never know how it's going to turn out I just need to keep my face and uh, hope, hope for the best hope it will come out decent Okay, so that's recap. A distant, foggy forest in the background and the nice dark tree and the harsh edge shapes of the rock with some reflection on the river. So let me see. I think we should do like a tiny figures here. Well, not tiny, like decent sized figure here for a visual reference. So I'm going to switch the camera and see if I can pull that off here. Now for the figure, I like to start with the face. Okay, so like a face right here. One thing I want, I really want to tell you guys is that never do a face like like a round dot. Okay, keep the face a little bit elongated. Cause I'll, like I see, I see quite a few people paint the face as a round dot, and it starts to look very cartoonish, and the face, the the head looks really round. And keep the head small. Don't make like a huge head and a small body. I do see that a lot of time. And I did make that mistake myself when I started to paint. So watch the proportion. So like this guy uh, having wear. Oh, like a dark blue jeans here. Like so. Leg forward, really loosely painted. Okay. okay. Have the water kind of blended a little bit. nice and loose give a little bit of hair and uh, I'll give him the partner Just let her wear like a dark color. Okay. She's behind him, so I will keep paint around him. I 
I think I don't need to define her that much. So I'm just gonna blend her into the background, like so. Yeah, I think that will do it. Yep, I don't need to define her that well. So she's near the tree. Thank you, Betty. All right. All right. After his trial, I'll come back in and put some gouache on the shoulder of a highlight and the figure will just pop. Alright, I'm gonna do some final touches. Um, okay, this is a rosemary brush. This is 772. It looks funny, it looks like a sword. But it is great for vegetation. I'm just gonna do a test here. Okay. So I just have a little bit of grass. I'm gonna put it here. I have a little bit of grass sort of just growing up from the pond. Okay. A couple of them, not too many. Okay. Just to give it some sense of foreground. Little grass in the foreground. So all of a sudden you see even more depths than it already has. And so I'm here, it's already really dark here, so it's not gonna show much. So I'm gonna mainly focus on this guy. Okay, it's getting a little bit late, so I'm going to wrap it up very quickly. You don't want to keep you guys too late. These guys are pretty tired too, so... A little bit here, a little bit there. Just breathe some life into it. Um, no, the one I the one I paint the figure. I actually really use this brush. The the one I use figure is they're just Kolinsky brushes. Uh, so number ten is Skoda Re uh, Reserva. I don't know how to spell that. Um, I have number ten Skoda Kolinsky brush, and this is a number six Da Vinci brush. This is like the two brush I use for the portrait and the figure. Yeah, that funny looking brush, I actually didn't use it that much. Okay. okay. Alright, I need to wrap it up pretty quickly. Alright, here's my gouache. 
So some final touches. I'm gonna use... Okay, so I'm gonna use some white gouache out of the tube. Just to... I hope that's dried enough. Give it some highlights on the shoulder, like so. And there a figure pops. Okay, sink. I don't know. Separate them just a little bit. And uh adding a little bit details here just to I don't know maybe she's wearing like a white skirt or something I am actually not sure that's just there to separate her a little bit her head a little bit lighter here okay yeah it's just gonna make her darker It's funny how this tiny scene cost me so much time. It's amazing. Okay. Oh, thanks for tuning in, JD. Or Joanne, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty much done anyway, so... Switch it back. Stepping back a little bit. Now, I'll probably start to... Um, I'll probably still try to add a little bit more detail here. Not too much, just a little bit, just to have a little bit more definition on the rock. But that's pretty much it. I think as far as the painting goes, this is pretty much it. So, yet yeah, I will just signing off here. Hope you guys like this session. I'll try to do more and I'll see you guys later. Um, so before I go, I don't know, I probably have five minutes. <laughs> Anybody have any questions or comment or anything? As I just start doodling here. Thank you very much. Yeah, there's always more pressure when I'm painting. When there's people watching me, even though I don't see any of you. <laughs> Like in real, real life, I know people are watching, so pressure is on. This is tw uh, this is twelve by sixteen. Yeah, most of my painting are twelve by sixteen. I don't usually paint super large, cause uh, I don't know. I just used to paint a little bit smaller.
highlight diagonally behind two people below the two people i'm not sure which one are you talking about maybe here those are just empty spaces i'm trying to open up for the stream i'll probably cover some of them up um break them up just a little bit more Yeah, right now is the case that I'm just trying to modify the shape, make them a little bit better. I can just keep going to add more shapes and so on until it's a little bit too much. Thank you. Squadio Data MJ. I'm <laughs> I'm not gonna try to say your YouTube name. I might get it wrong. Okay, I think I'll end my live session here as I start keep trying to fuss with this. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.